Yeah. September 12, 1988. One of the dark days in Jamaica's history. Hurricane Gilbert. Yeah. <clears throat> that is the stamp now, you stamp your name. Even if it was even though you stamped it before, you stamped your name in the annals of Jamaica's music history. Wow. While Gilbert. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You made mention before that. We sang what I talked about earlier. We are bringing the yeah act as the Oberman again. Man shortage. Yes. In Ma, you mentioned earlier in man shortage that instead of doing the seven inch, which is the forty five, yeah. you did a twelve inch which became a six minute record. Yeah. Many people weren't doing that back then. True. Okay. And even now that song would be three songs, cause most time now one of them songs are two minutes, two and a half minutes. Yeah. But we see uh, the the clubs and the sound system abroad, let's say in, in New York and other yes. places, eh? they were buying and selling the twelve inch. Oh. So the twelve inch wasn't really selling in Jamaica. Oh, okay. A forty five a sell here. Yeah, the, the twelve inch forty five. Right. The big the big forty five call it disco forty five. Yes. Yeah. And that was selling abroad. Mm. So you know that. So you, 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 you try to tell yourself so that. Yeah, man. And I said that to say that Gilbert is six minutes mash song. Mm -hmm. Right? And in the six minutes mash song, there are six to seven different verses in the song. <laughs> and it is on the duck rhythm. Mm -hmm. Duck dance rhythm, right? Mm -hmm. One of the verse, you know, you do the part, you know, Boata come in a room, and then you say, Apologies to all of the persons who are affected and stuff. Mm. And then you start, you start the song, yeah? See me dish. I, I have that as probably the first verse per se. You know the song. Wanna see me dish. Mm. After you do the apology and thing and, and then something there. Then you went on to beer because no light not there. Fridge them out, beer yourself for $10. That scene with Leone Farbs. Mm. I mean I bring up Leone Farbs because <laughs> some legendary Jamaicans in the video. Yeah. I could continue. <laughs> then you went on to water with up my what's it not. You mean you what not? No, what's it not? <laughs> yeah. Right? And in that, that, that scene, you had, I think it was Miss Upton from Lime Tree Lane. Mm -hmm. Because they must say, see me, 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 me DVD at Gilbert give me that. So while some people suffer, some people benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because some man I get them, them cause some loot in Guad. Yeah, man. Then we, <laughs> we move on to my favorite part of the song. Natty Dread, Dread with Volier Volier. Jones. <laughs> yeah. Then after Natty Dread, we move to Alifa. Alifa mm. <laughs> <laughs> hiding on the bed. Yeah, the, uh, right, and then there was a part about your kitchen backside out and all of them. Yeah. Kitchen backside. backside out, right? And then now uh, your bingo bag, cover your roof. Mm -hmm. All of them, they are different verses. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. I want to tell you, when you're writing uh, some songs, you know, uh, I have to. Uh, omit certain verses. I mean, not really omit certain verses, yeah. but bearing in mind that radio stations only play about three minutes of right. the song. Right. Uh, when I get an idea to write certain songs, I get all four verses and all them something. And uh, to just kind of reach a point where I said, no, I forgot to Yeah, I cut it here, so. Yeah. Mm. So with Wild Gilbert now, all of those uh, verses that you mentioned, yeah, they couldn't hold on the, on the, on the father. So it was extended. Yeah, an extended. An yeah. Album. And that's why the album sold so, so much because the extended version was on the album. Right, okay. But it was just the, 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 the half, the three minutes version that was yeah. in the media space. Mm -hmm. You took, at that point in time, the single greatest natural disaster in Jamaica's history. And while people were still struggling and trying to get back themselves together, you gave them a reason. Yeah. To smile, to laugh. Yeah, man. A lot of people came to me afterwards and said, that song really helped me through the, the depression of, of, of the aftermath. The aftermath. Yeah, of the hurricane. Yeah. Yes. That song also, the video, as I said, some legendary people, Leone Forbes, Miss Upton, Oliver Samuels, Valier Johnson, among yeah. others. That video was directed by Miss Marcia Forbes. No, it was no. not. No, it was not. It was directed by me. By you? No, no, no. <laughs> no, it was directed by, I don't know the guy's name. You know? So, what role did Marcia play? She was the CEO of the company oh. that we rented the equipment from. Oh. You know, them days, uh, I was making my own videos. So, I would uh, hire a cameraman, hire a sound man, hire equipment and all that. 
and shoot my own videos. So for this particular project now, I went to Fierce Tree and decided that, yeah, I want to shoot this video. So I want to hire your, your studio, your editing and your cameras and all that. She said, no problem. She, but she said that uh, I would suggest that you was a, a, a qualified director. Uh -huh. Because even though I was directing my own stuff, you know, I don't see myself as a director. Right. So if I could get a director to direct my stuff, no problem. I pay him, of course, you know. So we got a director. Did some scenes and all of that, you know. But I always noticed that when it's time to edit and all of that, you know, she always makes sure, she always don't tell me which date we're editing and all that, and she would do all of those things, you know. She had nothing to do with because it. Because the word in a street, and like I said that very confidently just now, you know, because no, the word that. in a street is that the video was directed by Marcia Forrest. It was not directed, but I, don't, I can't remember the guy's name. I, I'm, I'm so okay. vexed about it, but the guy's name. So Phase 3 shot the video door? Yeah, Phase okay. 3 company. At the company, yeah, man? Yeah, I paid them for, them for the camera and all those things and, and shot the video, you know? But she had nothing to do with directing or producing or anything like that. So much so that uh, when the song was nominated for Video of the Year... As it should have been. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I went to the local theatre to to the, the Jamie Awards and all those things. Uh, she was there, you know, prepared to go on stage and collect, you know. So I, so I went to the, the producer of the, of the program and went to the, the big music executive and asked him, who was supposed to collect for the best music video? Is it the producer, the director, or the owner, or whatever? He said, the producer, or the owner told the producer and the owner is me. If you had said the director now, it would have been the, the other gentleman that you, you may mention now. Yeah. So I was the producer and the owner of the video. Fierce Street have nothing to do with it apart from the fact that I they were employed to, to, to yeah. show the video. Yeah. So when you announced the, the winner now, I went up and seen and collected. <laughs> a couple, couple of days afterwards, there was an article in the paper. She put out this article in the paper that, that Loving Dear went up and collected and he was not supposed to collect it. It was supposed to be she. She had nothing to do with it. Let me say it again. She had nothing to do with the video apart from suggesting that I use a director, which I did. The director directed the video. I produced it. I... I uh, I own the video. Or the executive producer. Yeah. She didn't do nothing as producing or editing or anything like that. I never knew say it was such a big thing around it though. Me just here in the street say I must say as a matter of fact, the word in the street is even a little bit longer because the word in the street say it was done for free because she felt the impact of the song and you know the whole situation <laughs> done for free no such thing and I'm make a street silver and I'm just no. walking right <laughs> not no gossip about me spend my own money pay the producer no sorry pay the director Checker. and paid phase three the for company the and for time. the equipment yeah and the editing time in them studio mm. but separate and apart from that Classic. <laughs> classic, 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 classic. As a teacher of geography, yeah. I have known many teachers who have used that song well, in social studies and, and geography yeah. as introductory activity and them something, and that will never change. Yeah. Never, never change. You experience some of the destruction personally. You lost your satellite dish among other things? Well, I didn't really lose it. it it fell off the house. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, some people lose them this totally, you know. Yeah, it fly, fly it, gun. Yeah, man. But my one just fell in the backyard. Oh, okay. You know. And some water did come in my room and see what's up. what's up with the roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a slab roof I have at my place. Okay, oh, so, so, so that, that can't blow up? No. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that song, as I said, is, is a song that helped to 
to cushion the depression at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And what what led it to cause other songs were written about Gilbert, <laughs> but the only Gilbert song we know is Wild Gilbert. Well, my song was, I, 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 I tried to incorporate uh, other people's experience in it. You know, and, right. And I'm coming for a good song. Other artists and producers now just wanted to capitalize on Gilbert. Mm. So the rush come out with something. Now, to most people it would seem as if that my Wild Gilbert came out immediately after after Gilbert after the hurricane. But it wasn't so. No, because the company, the studio where I recorded my songs was at Dynamic Sounds. Dynamics. No, Dynamic Sounds was flooded out oh. during during the during hurricane. The hurricane. So the studio was not in, in commission until about two weeks afterwards. Okay. They could finally go in and record the song. So Wild Gilbert only came out about Three, three or four weeks after. after. And by the time you had other songs by other artists out there. Right. Long before me. Yes. But then when Gilbert came out, then it's like a storm. You know? well, Blow Gilbert, them out there. Yeah, man. <laughs> Your song, it wasn't immediately after the storm, like some others. No. And can I say that me have helped too in terms of penning the song with yeah. real meaning and of feeling course. compared to the others. Boss, when me write them kind of songs, they may not do it just to capitalize on the thing, you know, and make a money. Mm. As, as, as you can see, like I said in the early part of the song, we would like to express our sympathies, sympathies to those right. affected by Yeah, because, you know, it's a serious thing. People the cognizant of the, of the yeah. situation. But we had to document it because it, it, it's a historical thing. The only storm I experienced before that was 1951. Charlie. 51 storm, good as Charlie. Yeah, because I was born in 1948, so yes. I look a youth at them time then. You know? So mm -hmm. when Gilbert came out, it was the first time in my experience that I really saw what was happening. So I write a song about it, you know? And I was writing lyrics that could that people could identify with. I relate to. Yeah, and I didn't want to do a, a kind of gloomy, down, you know, I don't look a human to the whole thing. You know? A lot of you are. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, shortly after that, uh, like we used to just hang out at uh, Skateland in Half a Tree, mm. and Gregory Isaacs and all the other artists would hang out there. So one day, we did a, a, a chill out of all our vibes, you know. And uh, one of the Rasta man them come and said, Oh, I love when you that. Move from your man, because what? You make fun of a Rasta, but. <laughs> That the, that the dread roof blew off. Yeah. So Gregory Isaac said, What are you talking about, man? Rasta roof blow off too. So the man did nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with that. The man write about what happened to the people. Him. Rasta roof blow off. As a matter of fact, see at the end of the day, go buy some cigarettes for me now. <laughs> and when I'm gone, Gregory said to look crowd, say, Yeah, man, the man just man, you have to just send out, send go a shop. They could waste money, they send, they send go a shop. So some of the money, they take it personal? Yeah, man. So I make fun of a raster. <laughs> Am I a favorite part of this song, eh? Everybody <laughs> favorite part of this. As a matter of fact. <laughs> you do that follow one yeah. part. And, and, and Volley was actually in the video mm -hmm. talking about say, that. Uh, when you were know about the Wild Gilbert video, I went to Volley, Good Bridge, yeah. Good Bridge, you know, rest in peace. I said to him, I want to appear in the video. He said, the only way I would appear in the video is to do the part of the dread. He <laughs> <laughs> said, but you're not a raster. He <laughs> said, not a problem, man. Me want to do the party. And he did it exceptionally well. Yes. Make a piece of Gilbert, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Not the dreadlocks sit down inside I look how Gilbert are going outside When breeze lick down me such in restaurant Not the dread jump up and chant Lick them jaw Go and go do it And them did give the dread poor feet Joke them jaw with storm and thunder Tear off them roof and broke them window Three sheets of zinc leaf off a Joe house Dread flash him locks and start to shout Selassie I ja, king of kings, show them say a we run things, blow over them house, but make them survive. 
So when them see I, them will realize, it's true, I'm merciful, why is I alive? <laughs> Little after that, Gilbert turned back, lift off the roof of a naughty dress, shock himself, blows and skirt, jam us in the van, say I and I live right as so. Water come in on me room, we sleep out some with the broom. The little dog love to see such fun and the dish run away with his food. Only see me dish, only see me. This take off like flying saucer, me roof my great without a visa. My bedroom full of water, me in the dark, no light, no one, yeah. and true, me no have no generator. One coal beer costs ten dollar. Ten dollar? Mm-hmm. Ten dollar. <laughs> me fish and me meat while in the freezer, a pure bully beef full of me structure. Me full of bully beef, full of bully beef. Me can't get fi cook, so me full of bully beef, be full of bully beef. <laughs> And so forth and so on. So on and so forth. Yeah. <laughs> Brother, that song will live forever. Yeah. As long as there are Jamaicans and the history is still intact, that will be a part of our history. Mm. Yeah. Creative, witty, comedic, and you are also, because even with the $10 dollar thing, even though after Gilbert, they did have to marry some product. Yeah. And you have to buy this. If you have to get that, you have to get this and all them something. There. So, whilst it was with you, still a teach. A document, you document the situation. Yes, I have. Yeah. Respect. As a matter of fact, as far as the writing lyrics are concerned, I would be quite comfortable just being behind the scenes writing lyrics for some of the artists. Then. Yeah? Yeah, man, because enough of them artists are. Big time artists, you know, DJ and all them something. There. But them li- the lyrical content. Yeah, them have the vocals and presence, but yeah, the lyrics. Yeah, man. True. When True. you put some of them on, them say, no, no, me write my own lyrics. I, I, I. <laughs> you can't fault them for that. Them yeah, you can't fault them for that. If you write your own lyrics and you make money off it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm. There were a couple of songs after Gilbert. Gilbert again. Yeah. One part. Mm-hmm. All of them tune there. Yeah. I put together a, a, an album of songs after Gilbert. Gilbert. Yeah. And the album did well, as a matter yeah, of fact. I did a, a, a cassette at the time, too, a video cassette. Mm-hmm. And it was selling quite well. Yeah, because that one part video is a very funny video as well, with Volier again. Yes, I am. <laughs> very, very funny video. I, I watched it for the first time today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, defer- I, I first, first time, you know, said so there's a video for that song. Yeah, man, beautiful. While Gilbert sold exceptionally well there's documentation that it sold over 200,000 plus copies yeah but we never get paid for all of that just pirated all over the place so now you everything in, so, a, in a jamaica in a jamaica <laughs> yeah so the man them stamp it at a press that a place that should be thought yeah man the money blow it too yeah man but it, it, like, like i explained to you before if I get robbed out of X amount and I still yeah, make still, yeah, still. right. Because when I make records, I don't I don't expect that I won't get paid for all of my records yeah, I sold because yeah, other people that went, earlier. Yeah man. I yeah, have some man I sell it. Yeah man. <laughs> 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 and I'm one. <laughs> yeah, so bad. Yeah man. Mm. Another album that has done well. And as a matter of fact, you know, while I was doing the research, I realized uh, in terms of a body of work. One day Christian, mm. because some of the musicians, Sly and Robbie, Robbie Lynn, Dean Fraser, some of the people. Yeah, man. And the backing vocals, Pamal, Marcia Griffiths, um, Nadine Sutherland, Cynthia Slas, so, some of the greatest voices in the history of the music, brother. Boss, with me a, a, a work on a project, I want the best. Or if I can afford the best, I want the best. In the early days, I could not afford the best because they would have enough money. Right. But when I start making money now, calling the good people them. I good people them. I call them too, brother. Yeah, man. <laughs> All I good people them. And there are others who for name I not even mention because I, mean, I remember them off at the top of my head. But in terms of a body of work and, and the quality of the music and musicians who were involved in that project, wonderful. I listen to the album, you know. I know songs are fight. By a poker me in a day and one day Christian and all them sang me. But they must sit down and because when I read, I mean I say, yeah, all of them wanna play upon this and all of them lovely voice upon this. And they go sit down, they go purchase it, they go listening. 
Pour que me in a day. That's Pour que me in a day. That was one of the big, big songs. Song. Yeah. Yes. As a matter of fact, that song came out the year that the festival song was not so great. So oh, this song... People cannot take it on as a festival song. Yeah. The, I would cheer that the festival song means so great. There's a song called She Stop, She Go. She Stop, She Stop, She Stop, She Stop, She Go. She Stop and Go. Stop and Go. Yeah. <laughs> and the people have never liked it. So Poco Bay that there was a festival jam for that year then? Yeah, man. It have a, it have a vibe still. Of course. It have the vibe of it too. Let me tell you about Poco Bay in a day now. Uh, the same song that I, I mentioned before when Chalice did uh, Revival Time. Right. Yeah, because you and Chalice and Poco Bay in a day. Yeah. Right. Revival Time came out. It was a, a big hit. Now, Chalice been recording since then. And for about two years or so, they couldn't find another hit. So I went to them with this song. Immediately after revival time, I said to them, I have a song for you, which would be a perfect follow-up to revival time. So I played Poco Me in a day for them. Vian Arman, Vian Arman was the leader of Chalice. Mm -hmm. He said, no, sir. We don't want to be typecast as a, as a revival or a Poco band. <laughs> yeah. But no, that's not one song, uh, like yeah. it's an album. Right. But after two years of trying and couldn't find another hit song like Revival Time, I decided I was going to do my, my album, One Day Christian. And I still wanted uh, Charles to do the song. So I went back to them. Mm. And this time they were more receptive. Yeah, after being in the wilderness for uh. <laughs> two years. <laughs> So we came together and we recorded the song. Now, when the song came out and started burning down the place, and we wanted to, I wanted to do some shows on the place, yeah. So I went to the band and asked them to come and make do some shows together. They said, them is a show band, they're not a backing band. So, so I draw for Fab Five. Great Fab Five. Yeah, man. <laughs> And we eat food all over the island with that song. Belly full. Yeah, man. So much so that uh, even when Fab Five doing them shows and I'm not booked on the show, them I call it. Yeah, man, I come and tear down the place. <laughs> yeah. No. A few years down the road now, Red Stripe was doing a, a, a series of shows like The History of Jamaican Music and the big show at Sabina Park. So they wanted people from Kumina, folk and reggae and dance or revival, 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 revival and all that. Yeah. So they, they booked Charles on the show and they booked me on the show. So I was doing my rehearsals with the, the, the backup band, not Charles. Right. And I got a phone call. And the voice said, me, you see a re re rehearse for community like you want to do it on the show. That was weird. He said, no, you can't do it, because we are going to do it. <laughs> so that the song that we're now on, though. Right. And my song, I'm write it, I'm produce it. I'm invited them as guest artists to come to the song. He said, you can't do the song, because we do that song. So, man, <laughs> that is madness. <laughs> so, I said, no, man, that can't work. So, I rehearse my song and plan my show and all that. When you reach the venue now, to the show, we check the running order, and since this thing going go from folk all the way up to dance and all that, means that me going go on long before Chalice because me doing revival long before. <laughs> you ambush them? Not ambush, I, I saw the show set. You know? oh, okay, oh, oh, okay, okay, but it means that you, you ask, yeah. No, 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 okay. no, no, because. This, this show is all about the evolution of Jamaican music. The different stages and yeah. phases, okay. So Charles was in reggae, you know. And you the revival. So then yeah. the way after you don't so. Yeah. So I check the stage manager, him show me the running order. I said, alright, no problem, man. I'm gonna do my song. Only to say that Charles appeared on stage before me. The man bush you? Yeah. <laughs> and throw the whole show out of whack. The stage manager at the time, and the producer at the time, was uh, Cooper. Grub? No, not, not, no. Bill, not, Bill, not Bill Cooper. Oh, okay. Cooper from 
Ah, uh, Ibu Cooper. Ibu, okay, okay, okay. So I went to him before the show and said, you sure this is running out? I said, yeah, man. You appear, yes, sir. Charles Way down, yes, sir. So I said, everything all right now. But apparently, Charles went to him and then ah, so he changed. Yeah. So he threw everything out of whack because you have a reggae a come on long before revival. So I said, no, sir. I must pack up my costume and go to my yard. Because if them go up and go to the uh, puck me in a day, it was my signature tune at the time in, in, the, in the evolution of Jamaican music. Yes. Me not in relevance again. I me, me, me ask you a question, sir, loving there. Because Mr. Down here, I am listening, you know, mm -hmm. and this is something new to me. Well, if I you, me you, you, <laughs> you have always been somebody who is, you know, apparently not confrontational and easy no, going. No, just laid back and easy going. Could that be the reason why so many injustices were meted out to you along the journey? Yeah, man, yeah, man. But you see, it never bother me. Me make money, me all right. Me look after my family, me, me cool, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, me all right. I said the same thing to Yeah, man, but them go and fret over me. Me, not, me all right. So, even when uh, we ain't even tell me an expletive. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, man. Me never forget that. I mean, I'm not making forget it. You know, I'm making you forget it. No. <laughs> Since then, them come to me and talk, you know, and, you know, as friends and all that. But, me can't forget that. Mm. Imagine. Me write the song, me produce the song, me invite you to come and share the song with me. And you say, me can't sing it because you are going to do it. And then I hear a song. I even offered them a compromise, you know, and said, all right. We could do it together. Yeah. Man said, no. They might do it. And me never have no power at the time. The only person who, who, who had the power was the producer of the show, Ibu Cooper. Cooper. Mm. And he never do not about it. But you know about that. No about that. No man, we love it. Certain things just mark long for experience. Just love it. Yeah man. I just love it. Yeah man. Me and Marsa Griffiths are still friends now, you know. Mm. Even though she Queen, never, man. Yeah man. Even though she never stand up for me against Miss Pattinger and insist that they get my credit for my song. <laughs> I won't be there with a party, you know. Yeah, so, yeah it's just a judge. Not oh. a curveball, my children. Yeah, not a curveball. <laughs> yeah, I learned a lot of things, sir. Jamie, can you have a party? Gang of five. <laughs> Light a candle. And find a way back home. Social commentary. Social commentary. Yeah. yeah. The gang of five. The gang of five. Mm -hmm. And the, the leader at the time. Siaga. Yeah, man. I love the song. <laughs> yeah. Just, I tell him, like the candle, we'll sing a song, can yeah, find a way back home. So I said, that, that sentence alone is a hit song. So I said to write a song around it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you ask for a piece of that song. Yeah, I ask for it. But there's a big song in the catalog. Yeah. Hit song. I still like eat food off still I have like a dub plate. Food for it, yeah, man. We can't have enough sound when they're dead with the dub plate, man. Yeah, man, the sound, man, I'm still like, <laughs> let them just discover the song. Yeah? Yeah. I'm a man from foreign and all them places, you know. Who am I with the dub plate? Yeah, that's like great. Like I can go sing a song, you can find the way home. home. What? <laughs> I'll push me, I'll push you, I'll make peace with you, man. Now, all you sinners. And prodigal sons, repent and return to the flock. Light a candle, sing a song key and find your way back home. Know all your poor little wandering sheep who from the flock have strayed away. There is forgiveness waiting here. If you repent of your sins today, don't you know the road back home is rocky and it is dark when you're on your own. But if you heed the master's advice right now, you will find your way back home. So come on and find your way back home right now. 
Find your way back home. Me safe light a candle. Sing a song key and find your way back home. But if you want to come take over, no song key, no sing. You want to test the ruler, no song key, no sing so. You want to come and run things. No sanky, no sing so. We don't confess to your sins. No sanky, no sing so. Cause one done in a the master's plan. One done alone. And if you think, say, you are the one, my friend, you are on your own. God, there is one true shepherd of the flock. Right now, who no one can defy. And if anybody tell you anything different, what you do? Mash down that lie. <laughs> Bruce Lee says, I find, <coughs> find you in my <laughs> Beautifully written again, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Beautifully written again. I'm not trying to offend nobody. I'm not singing a song, man. I'm not busy with people like that. <laughs> no, watch your face. Many artists, sir, love in there. They were acting in the 80s and the 90s, and when they cool off, they find it almost impossible to find an exit song. In the 2000s, you much down the line there. You're a lady, G. Okay. <laughs> the question. That question. That question. You eat. You cook. You cook. <laughs> yeah. Need song again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it, it's all about the lyrics, you know. Yeah. Uh, a, a good song never dies. You know, a really might die and you revive it some other time. But a good song, good lyrics, you know, especially if it's a little bit of humor in it, that people mm. can relate to it. You know? And uh, might be suggestive. But then again, it's not slack. Right. And they never banned that one there. No. Well, if certain people had the way, they would have banned They would have. Yeah. Uh, you wrote the song and invited Lady G yeah. or Hoytgo. You wrote what it. What you would think? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Me write it. Yeah. And call her in to do it. Because Lady G, sorry, Lady G is a DJ who may rate, you know. Mm. And apart from that, she has a history of doing those kind right, of songs. Right, right, right. Papa, Papa song. You know? True, yeah. true. Mm -hmm. Chemistry was right, man. Yeah, man. An exit song. <laughs> <laughs> you did something also with Mama T or something like that. Um, dumpling, dumpling Shop. Dumpling Shop, yeah. Um, similar to Ramping Shop type yeah, of man. vibes. Yeah. That was another yeah. big tune. Yeah, man. <laughs> you still have a touch, man. You never lose it, you know, as long as the brains can still function, you know. Mm. They can still write the lyrics. Yes. Might not be able to deliver it with the conviction of the younger artists. Right, you know? right, right. And that's why I tell you that I'll be quite comfortable to write for some of them. Scene, just writing the lyrics, you know, because, yeah, right. I have been on the, spot, uh, on, the, on the stage in the spotlight a long time. I know what it is like. It's nice. So, I'm not wrong on that. Yes. I'm not right. When I was growing up, I, when, when my boy said, I never have TV in my yard until I go live with my stepmother and thing. But whilst growing up, there was a particular advertisement on TV. It became very, very popular. Stay in touch. Cable and wireless. Let us keep in touch. Let us keep in touch. Can't you see we're the one love generation? Welcome in a brand new day. May there be renewed communication between people over here and people everywhere. Some friendly conversation is never too much. We are all one people, so let us keep in touch. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. You want to tell how that song came about? There's a history behind that, you know? Yeah, man, tell me, man. <laughs> <laughs> tell the viewers. I got, a call, I got a call from uh, a former prime minister. Portia Simpson, you know? Yeah, who said that her husband wanted a song to motivate his workers, you know? Because he was saying that he had some kind of song that, the, that could uh, 
galvanize his company and his workers and motivate them. And she told him that she knows somebody who can write any kind of song you want. <laughs> yeah. So he said, all right, bring him in. So she called me and told me. So I decided that I would write the song. Yeah? So I wrote the lyrics, man, and then took it to Grub Cooper. He was going to be the arranger at the time. Mm. So when he hear the song, he said, blows and skirt, it's so wicked, man. One piece of One piece of this, you know. Let me say, all right. Because him is a, an artist who me respect and admire. Drummer, keyboard player, musician, talented. arranger. Yeah, man, mm. well talented. So I say, any part you want, you know. So I say, all right. He may sing the chorus, and me will sing the verse. And that was it, you know. In this age of opportunity, you can be anything you want to be. You have to have dedication. Never give up on your goals, follow your dreams. No matter how cold the world seems, you got to have determination. Can't you see we're the one love generation? Seems like I love that. So yeah. I love it there. Yeah, man, I love that song. Well, I said, yeah, vibe. Yeah, man, because, you know, and especially when you see all the, the, the video was done by Natalie Thompson. Mm. Well put together, you know. And as a matter of fact, it's still generating some interest now because some people dig it up and start show it on, on YouTube and all that. And people say, oh, right, this is old time Jamaica. This is yes. what Jamaica used to be. Yeah? Beautiful, man. You and Baron Lee, clear some <laughs> history. Yeah, man. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about that, though. Apart from the fact that his company, Dynamic Sounds, was distributing my records and uh, pirating my records, I did a, a few shows with, with the band, the Dragoneers. Yeah, the yeah. Dragoneers. Uh, that show in Trinidad that I did, I mashed on the place. Carnival Spectacular. Carnival, yeah. It was while Byron Lee was there, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, Byron Lee, every time he go carnival, he always goes to Trinidad, like, uh, 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 like a month or before. three weeks before carnival, to learn the songs and get to meet the, the artists. Yeah, you know? so he was there, you know. He did several interviews about Jamaica and music and all that. And he was always putting down Jamaican musicians and uh, uh, compared to Trinidad musicians, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man, so much so that... Having been based in Jamaica? Yeah. So much so that some of the... A, a lot of the Jamaican musicians then put a band on Dynamic Sound Studio because our band was a diss them. Oh, yeah? Yeah, man. Every time go Trinidad, him just and try and dare himself to the Trinidadians at the expense of Jamaicans. Anyway, me there are Jamaican, but only there are Trinidad now. And... Uh, Spectacular uh, uh, carnival called me and booked me to appear in Trinidad. Yeah? But it was towards the end of carnival. Right. But, uh, after Barony is there. Yeah? So while I was in Jamaica, Barony did the Trinidad I performed. I got a call from BJ, which is Barony's son, and said, Dragon wanted to perform with him on a show in Barbados. How much would I charge? I'm going to tell him the figure. He come back to me a day later and said, Baron, he say it's a, it's a small show in a club and you will just be doing about two songs as a guest artist. So I said, all right, then. And we reduce the price. He said, I'll do about 1,500 US dollars, you know? It's a small show in a club. And so that man said, it, it's a small show, small venue. Yeah, so I so give a, a small a small price, you know? <laughs> you know, yeah. for a small show in Barbados after the Trinidad Carnival. Anyway. We still there Jamaica and in their Trinidad, in, in their Trinidad perform. Yeah? When we reach Trinidad now, it's like, a, it's like God come. <laughs> because at that time we had Babylon books, don't bend down, fantasize, and mashed on the whole Eastern Caribbean. Yeah, the man. Yeah, man, he is the man. <laughs> <laughs> so we did some big shows at Trinidad now. So while I was at, in Trinidad at the hotel, uh, a guy from Barbados, a reporter from Barbados, came to me uh, for do, to, uh, some kind of interview you know, about the show in Barbados. Right. So he said, how do you feel about the show in Barbados? He said, I said, a big thing. He said, come do a two song with Byron Lee. The man laughed <laughs> and said, two song? <laughs> You're mad. <laughs> the show in Barbados 
is in the stadium uh, and you are the headliner. Kensington Oval possible. So I say, but Byron Lee tell me say the show is in a club. Yeah. And I just said the two songs. I say, alright. So I say, what are you going to do? I say, well, I come with myself already to the show, so I have to come to Barbados and perform. So, a day after that now, I got a call from Barbados, from a man who identified himself as the promoter of the show. So I say, oh, you still? You all right for the show? I say, yeah, man. Come over. The show is on a Saturday. I say, well, no, no, no. The show is on a Friday. So I said, but you don't tell me Saturday. So this is my excuse not to pull out because they changed the date of the show. Right. So I said, boy, I can't make it, you know, because now something is doing already. Because you're going change the date. I said, boy, see, but you have to come. But, I mean, you have to. I said, but you're not going to miss me. I said, the two song pan with Byron Lee. He said, no, he is the promoter of the show, and the show is in the stadium. So I said, who are you? He said, my name is Gabby. The mighty Gabby, he was the big time Calypso ah. in the So he was supposed to be the, prom the, promoter, the promoter of the show. Yes. So I said, well, the only way me can really come and do that show is if me get the original fee when me did ask her for my performance. Right. Because you know, tell me say it was a local show. Yeah, the, the local show. Nah, club. <laughs> and, and I want the money, all of the money Up before front. I go on stage. So I say, no problem, boss, no problem. All the money before you go on stage, no problem. He said, the only thing I want you to do for me is a show for, for him, the promoter, okay. after the, okay, the show okay. at the stadium. Then I said, no problem. But now I have to pay me for that. He <laughs> said, all right, how much you got charged? He said, all right, $1,500, not a problem. He said, all right, cool. So I said, you are the promoter of the show. I said, yes. So I said, so I don't have to talk with Byron Lee about the show anymore. I said, no, man, I'm the promoter. So I said, all right, cool. So after me, me done mash up Trinidad now, you know, the morning we're supposed to be departing for Barbados. Byron Lee come to this hotel, come pick me up. Me and Byron and a friend, you know, but he come pick me up now. And we arrive in Barbados, two of us coming off the plane together. Big, big thing, you know. So when we reach, I said, Gabby, I'm coming in for him, Gabby. So I said, remember what I said in the box. I want the money before I go up on stage. I said, all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I go have some meeting with Byron Lee, whatever. All of a sudden, I said, Byron Lee comes, come here, 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 come here. So I go. So I said, what is this I hear you talking about? You want 6,000 US dollars to perform on the show? But we agreed for 1500 So I said, yeah, we agreed for 1500 because you tell me, say, the show is in a club, we're doing two songs. I mean, just a guest artist on the show. He said, well, before I pay you $6,000, I pack up and go home. So I said, all right, pack up and go home then. Because I'm not performing for less than the $6,000, which I agree with the promoter of the show. Actually, I'm talking to you. You're just a band on the stage. Now, what a lot of people didn't know was that Byron Lee was the one who was the promoter of the show. He must get a little local on all the islands up front so he could come there and perform and get the money and perform. People in the country were paying a lot of taxes. So Gabby was the upfront promoter. But he was really working for Byron Lee. So he said, Me said, I'm going to work hard then. So Gabby turned to Byron Lee and said, B, what I must do? Byron Lee realized that I'm serious. So he said, well, if you agree, so you're going to pay them, and I said, well, just pay them and done. So, collect the money, perform, show it, mash up the place, man. Everybody get excited, and the biggest show in the bar, the kind of all the hit songs, you know, yes. and Do and Bend them was the number one song. Right. So I was the man in Barbados. After the show, now we go to the, the club now where we're going to do Gabby show, the 1500. Right. So I said, Gabby, I need the money for a grand stage. <laughs> so I realize the man in the club here, yeah. which I ripped me off. So I said, No, man, no, let's go and perform. And, and when you come up, you pay. He said, No, 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 no. Pay before I go on. And Baron Lee, in Vex, too, you know. 
and did a few man all them something but I said pay me before I go on and I said no one guy come up to me and said that him is in your mark smart or something like that and him is uh, an, an independent observer and he said yeah man I think you should go on and perform before you uh, and then they'll pay you afterwards so I said no I'm back I don't even know you you know so I said no so it, I said as a matter of fact tell you what don't pay me Give the money to a charity in Barbados and a charity which some reputable person will name in Barbados. Give the money to them, don't pay me because I don't collect already for mm, the big show. Yeah. He said, No, I'm not doing that. <sighs> so I said, I'm not performing. So that show didn't go on. Oh. I was flying out the next day. So I fly out. Apparently, Baron Lee and Gabby now have a big press conference and say that. Loving their, as they say, back raise Gabby. They say back raise is like, say, jack up the price. They say, loving their agree to a certain price, and then when they come to Barbados and see the crowd, they decide they want more money. And the same thing happened at the show afterwards at the club. They say they want the money up front, and they're not going to perform, they're getting money. And because they're not getting money, they don't perform. So, them start drag me name through the mud and all these things. Uh, lucky thing for me, you know, there was a, rep a reputable uh, newspaper editor, uh, reporter, who was at the club and heard and the whole what argument. Was going on. Yeah, and heard everything, even the part where I said, Give the money to a charity. charity, don't give it to me. So, when the big uh, headlines and all them things came out the, the following week you now about how loving they rip off the people of Barbados and all them something there. There was an article that came out shortly afterwards and said that not Nagosa because she was there and she heard everything. And even the, the, the reporter who came, the Barbadian reporter who came from Barbados to interview me was in Trinidad, right. came and said, Governor is telling the truth. He said, that although Gabby is my, is my fellow Bajan, uh, loving you is talking the truth. Because, and then after a while, people begin to realize uh, that Gabby was really the puppet for Baron Lee. So, I promised before I leave that since the people them didn't get what they wanted, yeah, I would come sure. back and do a free show. So people say, no, man, I'll come back. A big star, I'll come back and perform for free. No, I'll come back. Man. Now, the articles came out about Byron Lee. It was so bad that it, one guy even said that Byron Lee really expect the people of Barbados to believe that he came to Barbados with a 14-piece band and performed for free. No, man. Something wrong with that. Yeah. And they did some interview with, with, with some of the artists. Them, and said, do you think it was fair that Lovin got $6,000 US to perform on the show and, and only get that? that? And all of them say, it's all right because him is a drawing card. If it wasn't for him... Are you are the man at the time? Man? Yeah, if it wasn't for him, they would not be able to perform. So Baron Lee couldn't go back to Barbados. <laughs> well, that they couldn't go back, him shame. Yeah, not, yeah. For quite a while, you know. I went back a, a few months afterwards and did the free show. So much so like people started crowning me king. <laughs> because this is a man of his word. He came back and did the free show. He didn't have to come back. But I had made some good friends in Barbados at the time because I realized that I was so-called decent, upfront, yeah. honest, yeah. and the reporters them were, who interviewed me realized I was telling the truth all along. Mm. So I said, so I now nah, work with Byron Lee again. Years passed now, me there in Jamaica, he was always keep him carnival shows in Jamaica. And I was the man at the time, as a crossover artist. You know? So the local audience them now always asked for love in there. And he never want to put me on them show. Because me so me not working with them anymore. Anyway, I'm finally have to relent because I decided to say, yes, let them all love in there. He called me in his office. So I didn't know nothing about him, but I still go. He said, all right, he want me to perform on them show. So I said, all right, but I don't have no Calypso song out of the road now. So you know what you do? Make a work on a song together. Me spend the money and hire the musician them and just <coughs> you give me the studio time up front and me produce the song and then 
you market it. Because at that time, when Baron Lee and Carnival show come up, no other record could have even reached Paper and Roger apart from Baron and Calypso songs. Mm, yeah? Yeah, well, wow. even the Calypso songs them from Barbados, but him leak over. You couldn't play the original ones them from Trinidad and Barbados. You play one and like play one of Baron Lee on them. It's a, it's a, it's a heavy statement that they're just making up. It's a fact, it's a fact. He always have a number one song at Carnival time. <laughs> and most of the time, them, it's not deserved. Except yeah. for the time when he team up with Admiral Bale. Dance and Sota. Right. Them songs are big tune. But before that, he was doing the cover versions of the Trinidad and hit songs. Them. And me couldn't get my Calypso song played on RGR and none of them stations. Eh? Yeah. Unless we get him to true, endorse true, it. True, true, true. Yeah. Apparently. Right. So me say, me give it to you and you distribute it now. Me I work with you on your show, so get it played. He agreed to that. So, we're having rehearsals now. He called me in my office. And he said, well, we can only do one song on the show. On the carnival show, one song. And I said, no, we can't do one song. <laughs> because I have such a repertoire and people have come to see me. I'm going to do one song. Yeah. And I said, well, one song. So I said, all right, we can, we can do the one song. But me did plan to say, even when I go up on the stage and the one song, I couldn't get me off because the people would have all of them more. So I agreed. So I rehearsed my songs then. Two days before the show, he called me in the office again and said, Well, you want to say we can't have you up on the show, you know? So I said, Why? He might give some little football argument, you know? So I said, But we have an arrangement. And he said, so what do you know about the song that we record and you're supposed to distribute? He said, what is your responsibility now? I said, but we agreed that you would put up the studio time up front and take it back out of the seals of the record. After you promote it. Right. So he <laughs> said, well, forget about that, that part of it, man. He take the record, promote it yourself, and then pay the studio time. Now me couldn't get the record playing away. Because it's a Calypso record done for Baron Jamaica Can and yeah. Jamaica Carnival. Right. So, I couldn't get it played so I make the money. So, they said I'm going to sue me. Why? Because the argument was now that I must pay for the studio time. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I pay for the studio time. So, they so them sue me. Oh, they did? Yeah, they sued me. So I said, no, man, I'm going to count and sue him. So I sue him now because they still have my name on the poster, you know. Oh. Because my name was on so the... So still advertise with your people? <laughs> yeah, my name was on the poster too because it was like three days before Carnival, so I didn't have enough time to take off my name. So my name was on the poster, same way. And I didn't make no effort to make the people know that I love when you are performing. That. Yeah. So he sued me. And my counter so long and short of it is that go to court and I win the case. He have to pay me the money where he did book for and plus damages. And the lawyer who represents Baron Lee must such another liar. <laughs> he said, Loving Lee came to Baron Lee because he was broke and he needed money and begged Baron Lee to put him on the show. Not no like that. Me never need Baron Lee in no way at all. No way because I make my own money. Me was a bigger star than Baron Lee. Yeah, when Baron Lee got Trinidad, him try to play reggae in, in the heights of carnival and them stone him. Them boo him. And got mash up but loving their go there and do strictly reggae. Take a show. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Baron Lee in an interview said to the, the newspaper in Trinidad. It hurt him hard to know that uh, panty size is all Jamaican music has to offer. Yeah? Yeah. Panty size. Byron Lee. Yes, he did that. And that's why I tried to tell you that the, the musicians, the, mus the music fraternity in Jamaica did ban sound dynamic songs. Mm. For, a yeah, long, man, yeah, you said for, that. for a long, long while. Anyway, we win the case. Yeah. Why? Most people don't know about it was because I decided 
personally that I'm not going to broadcast it. Right. Because at that time, Byron he was very sick. Oh. Yeah, did the honorable thing then. Yeah, you know. Even though he'd go on him kind of way. Because even the, 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 the months leading up to the trial, you know, he even called my lawyer and said, you think the judge going to believe loving you over me? And my lawyer said, well, the facts will come out, you know. And every time them call up the case, him don't show up because him say him sick. I see. And yet there were pictures of him uh, at kind of at, at uh, his his events because he used to like to control the, the sound. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pictures of him out up and hearty and heel and hearty on the case, you know. <laughs> and we had those pictures. So the the the, the judge knows I lie them or tell. So we win the case. And, and the lawyer, I never call him name. Don't call him name, but don't call him stay. Yeah, you know. But him lie, you know. Well. well. <laughs> <laughs> so we just know it, you know. Yeah. So, uh, our next episode, that's in our journey. Yeah, man. You know? Yeah. But like I said, it never bother me. You know, me all right. I re- it, it never cost me nothing. Yes. <laughs> no. I realize that you're a very simple man. Yeah, and principled too, and yeah. honest, you know, because, you know, but if you go, because I was quite prepared to just love it, if him say, and him say, I was so, yeah. yeah, it's when him say, I'm going to sue me, and I say, all right, cool, because so, me have the facts by my side, and me have documents to prove it, him can't bully me, can, I mean, I people, respect that, yeah, man, people feel like, say, because it's barren, you know, even when I tell him, brother, never leave, who controls Sonic Sounds, that, me not nah work with Byron Lee no more. Never he said, no, you can't, you can't say that because, you know, Byron Lee is a powerful man in the business and uh, things and you might need him. I said, no, I don't need Byron Lee. Byron Lee need me. Because although Byron Lee has a big name, me bigger than Byron Lee in a trinity at that time. All year round, him only have a name carnival at carnival time. time. And he might try to suck up to the Trinidad and people. Him. But when me come there, I strictly reggae, me I do unapologetic reggae. Dance all reggae and the crowd love it. So they ride to him. Yeah, so even the Calypso and them down there say, Imagine reggae in a carnival. This has never happened before. Love in there. Hmm. I'm, I said earlier that you're a simple man, can we go add something to your conversation? Is it true that you prefer to walk so much that you haven't bought a car? <laughs> Yeah, you can ask me that. Yeah, they ask. Yeah, man. Yeah. When I came back to Jamaica in the early 80s, you know, after spending about 12 years in Canada, I did sell off the car and everything and all them things there yeah, and come home. Yeah, I come home, I never have enough money to buy a new car and bring home. And I said that the car you bring in must, have, must be a certain age. Yeah. I mm-hmm. couldn't afford that. So I never have the money to buy a car. I said, we just walk you know, and take the bus. And, because, you know, I'm not ashamed to do that. We couldn't afford a car, so we take bus and all them things. And I wasn't a big, big time star in Jamaica at the time. Right. So people never really noticed that, you know. And then again, coming from Canada in the heights of the winter and come to Jamaica in the sunshine. Now, yeah, take, tow, like yeah, man, take off my shirt and just walk straight. Yes. Yeah, man, so, so from them time there, he used to see me as somebody who like to walk. And I did love to walk because walking clears your mind and you meet people and you get ideas and inspiration, you know. Mm. So I did that. Now, when I start making some big money now, the first thing I buy is a house. People say, you're going to buy a car. You know? I said, but car not frightened me. Been there and done that. So I buy a car. Let me say, all right, next, next, next big money I get, I'm going to buy it. They buy a house. Yeah, yeah. man, may I follow on? <laughs> yeah. Next big money, I get me, I go buy a car. Yeah. Fortunately, though, me never buy a car. Mm. Because my parents decided not to come, come back home. from England. Yeah. And uh, they won't come back a long time, but they never have no way to come back. And they didn't want to sell the house in England because they had children in England right, who were born right, there. Right. And they didn't want to leave them with nothing. So I so said, to buy a house to them. So I checked one of them real estate agents who was working at Sonic Sounds. 
and say, look for a house for me, because my parents are coming from England and I want to buy a house for them. After two weeks, I hear nothing from me. I go to him and say, what happened? I say, look. I say, where are you looking? I say, I say, I go to Vineyard Town and I want to check. <laughs> so I say, <laughs> I talk about in the early days. Yeah, I had. I have Vineyard Town, when Vineyard Town was. It's, nice. It's, yeah. So I said, no, 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 all right, no bother with it. Yeah. I'm going to look at the house for myself. So I look around and find a house at the foot of, of Cherry Gardens in the Eagle Shop. I buy it, you know? Because I said, this man, here's me I bring home my parents, them, I'm retired. I'm putting them in a vineyard town. I'm putting them in a vineyard town. No, knock against vineyard town. Right. But we can afford a, bit, a different area yes. from that, you know? Fair enough. Yeah. So I buy the house. For mommy and daddy? Yeah. And fly them in, you know, come look on it and see if they like it. <laughs> I say, them love it to they death. They love it. Yeah, man, them go home immediately and come, and, and, and come, come back, back home. Come back home. They didn't have to sell the house in England. So they come back home and buy a car for my father as well. Yeah, still not buying a car for yourself? Eh? No, sir. Because my father needed a car more than me. Me, me all right, because I, get, I could get around without, without car. No problem. Yeah. They buy a house for them. Let me say, all right, the next big money I get, I'm going to buy a car. <laughs> this time, no, my sister come home from England, my big sister, with her daughter. And she did Jamaica and a box boat, you know, because she didn't have no. Mm. So I say, all right, I'm going to buy a house for her too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I'm going to buy a house. I told her so my, my sister and her, and her daughter. I wonder if my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. I <laughs> my house. <laughs> so, buy a house, you know. Yeah. So, the greatest achievement for me in you know, this business now is being able to look after my family. You know, I was going to answer that question eventually. Yeah. You know. yeah, man. That is a question over there. Yeah. Oh, yes, you normally yeah, answer. <laughs> so, I mean, oh, you know that too. Yeah. But you answer it already, but everything is good. Yeah, man. I, mean, so, me, 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 I mean, respect that. I respect the whole story, that, that situation there. Okay. I respect that. Greatly. Oh, it yeah. was a joy to see my mother in the garden with the green flowers, uh, uh, the green grass and the pretty flowers and all that. She was having fun. And another uh, great thing about it too, there was a mango tree, East Indian mango tree at the back. So was a tree, Aki tree. Them things that my mother loved. Nice. And just coming back from England, man, she, it was the greatest thing ever. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> so my mother and father really enjoyed themselves. So it was, I enjoyed watching them and seeing how them just enjoy the whole thing. You, know? mm. you have been doing the music for a long time. Yeah, long, long time. Long, long, long time. Is there anything where father love in there, love enough, other than music, where more than enough to feed them family? If the career wasn't centered around music? <laughs> if you didn't mention that question without mention feeding family, you know, that's a teaching. Teaching. <laughs> but that can't be no. Bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> teaching young students. Yeah, you, you, you like that? Yeah, man, young children. I love children, the young ones, them, yeah, who, the who young can ones mold them. and yes. shape and, you know? Yeah, man. I, I, I would have done that, you know. <laughs> but if you have feed your family, that uh, no, that no, going no, bad, that going bad. <laughs> Be agree with you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Although I say, uh, can feed the family. Yes. There are some teachers now in the profession who... Doing who, very well. Who, who can more than feed the family. Like my brother. <laughs> yeah. You, you still have the love for teaching. Yeah, man. Mm, nice, nice. Because, you see, the older people have a wealth of knowledge that they can impart to the youngsters. Sure. Them, yeah? And the youngsters are willing to accept it if it fed to them in the a... The right way. Yeah. You know? mm, fun way. Yeah, man. And I feel Creative like... Creative and be... dynamic way. Thank you, sir. I believe you, man. <laughs> I believe you. You have been many places to perform, yeah? Many, yeah. many places. But no, Trinidad is your place. Yeah, man. Like Barbados is your place. Mm. Would it be safe to say that Trinidad is probably your... your, your, your you know, your playground, your favorite place to go, go mash down. Yeah, man, because uh, that was the, the, the place that, that gave me my first big, big reception. I feel like say, me a smaddy, yes. me a big star. Apart from when I went there as a cadet in, in the 1960s, and 
enjoy Trinidad because I love the Trinidad and girls them accenting and and the curry and the the roti and all them something. I'm on other things with the Trinidad girl. Hey, nice yeah. girl though, yes man. <laughs> But Trinidad, so you love Trinidad? Yeah, man, mm. Trinidad. Because that reception that I got in Trinidad, that love, mm. only in a barbell does me get something like right. that. I know that you have been, you know, probably semi retired for a while. Yeah. Uh, you don't really do a lot anymore. But is there anywhere where you never go work, where you wouldn't mind, you know, go to go work before you wrap up the music thing, like wrap it up, wrap it up? <laughs> anywhere in Africa, man. Anywhere in Africa. Yeah, man. Any one of them countries in Africa. And and uh, anyway, Japan. And Japan. Yeah man. Yeah man. I appreciate some promoter I go watch Africa and Japan man and make it thing up, man. Yeah, but you see, some of my songs them not really big in them places, you know? mm. So I guess them they will only invite you if you have a, a, a tune of Guan well done this up. And that is why the the Caribbean and the Jamaica diaspora in the United States yes. was my biggest place. Them, yeah, man. Yeah, man. In them times, they were me all of them songs there, yes. the mid songs there. Anyway, Jamaican audience there. I did some of Yes. And whilst I know that, as I said, you're kind of semi retired, is there anything from a musical perspective that you, you don't think you, you grasp it where you still hope for your chief? Uh. Me say like uh, as a performer, as a, as a anything musically, you know. We probably want to do a couple more albums. We probably want to produce some young youths. We probably want what? Yeah, well, like produce some young. You see, I don't see myself as a producer. You know, right. I know what producers are. Mm. Who producers are? You know. <laughs> no, no, no. Seriously, yeah. I, I'm saying this respectfully now. Yes. I know the job of a producer. People like a uh, uh, Clive Hunter, really Lindo, them kind of people. You know, mm. they are producers. Them know the music, them know to get the sounds and all of that. I don't know that. Okay, fair I wasn't forced to do that because uh, the, the big studio them never want me. The mm. producer they never interested in me. So even though I do a thing now and put up my records them, I am not a producer. I am not an arranger. I don't see myself as a big singer. As a DJ, I am a lyricist who puts his lyrics to music. Fair enough. That's it. Yes. As I before, make me forget, you wrote and produced Rhythm King's first album? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That was good. So you do local production then, man? Yeah, in, 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 in the early days. In the early days. But you see, the problem with production now, why I don't really do much of it, I do do any of it now, is that it is the responsibility of the producer to get the song played on the radio. And that rough now. You see it? And I pay nobody Not just no. Uh, uh, for quite, a long time. Quite a while now. Me not pay nobody to play a song. Because I came from the times when you could get a song played without even paying a, a bag of money. If it go on a tour and you come back with a nice bottle of wine you get to a, a, this, a, jack. a this jack, you know. I love you for that and you play your music. Nowadays it's like say you have to give them house money, land money and care money. You, you have to mind them. I mean not mind no man. I don't think so. The last man he married my father. Son. I'm not my father, Mr. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> and that was after him done mine, me already. Right, right, right. So it's just Fair nice enough. to return the favor. True, true. Looking at the journey, I know you said that you own most of your things, but you still struggle with producers and people. Is everything in place for your royalties and publishing? Yes, I would like to think so. I am so happy to hear. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, the, the music business keep changing as time goes by. New evolution. Yeah, man. New format coming now that you never really bargained for in the early days. So things like streaming, streaming and, and all something, something there. there. We, we never write that, write that in a contract before. Yeah? Oh, yeah? No. So yeah, if you have to do things now, if you get them things there together. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. And as I said, streaming, the music is on the streaming platform, Spotify, iTunes, and places. Eh? Well, no, not really. Yeah. I mean, I really find that one in there. I mean, <laughs> get the thing out there, man. Yeah, man, I, I will. I promise I will. Mm. Yeah. Looking at the journey, is there anything you'll do differently now? Having had the experience, if you get the chance to redo it? Yeah. In the early days, I would have find a, 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 a top class producer and work with that producer. Mm. I wouldn't take it on by myself. but. You see, after getting uh, the kind of uh, rejection from the top class studios and top class people, 
you decide to go into this thing without vengeance. And when you start to make your own money now, you realize uh, you don't really need some of these so-called producers. But like I said to you before, I know what good producing is. And I'm not a, a producer. Right. So if I had a chance to work with a good producer who could bring out the talent, bring out the sound in you, how would I do that? Mm. Totally understand, man. To any have no farmer regrets to any other part of the journey? No, no. man. No, man. Me all right. Like yeah. I said, that's your thing in the boss. Me all right. All right man. Yeah, man. Them things don't bother me. I know you're all right. Mm. You see, even when you walk on the street and you know, man, Push him out of the window, a bus, so and say, bike, yeah. No, we're not going to buy a car. <laughs> me laugh. Yeah, right, it's man. funny. <laughs> you know? Me, all right. <laughs> I'm saying, No, you mean you're going to buy a car. He wouldn't mo- know what's going on. You know? so yeah, all right. Me, all right. <laughs> me love him. You know? They don't know. Yes. So I say, All right, cool. No, I don't have nothing against a musician or an artist who make him first big money I'm gonna buy him and go buy a car. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that. That's what you want, and your money, you earn it. But realize that the minute you drive that car off that parking lot, it's all those value. It, value gone down. Appreciation. Yeah, man, your house and your land. Always get the value. It be well, depends on where they are. Thank you very much. Okay. And let it, if you water, don't you know? Yeah. Where they make certain things come around you. As in anyway, you have some nice community to start out and people start coming in, come devaluating and them something. And that is why I try to buy property in areas that uh, some upstanding places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're gonna put your parents there. In a place. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> nice. You have a song with Dennis Brown. Ah. Um and John Lover. Lover. Yeah, man. Yes. The song with Lady G we spoke about that. The song with Mama Tia. Who else you have done collaborations with? Admiral Bailey. Admiral Bailey. Run come. I'm gonna tell us about Admiral Bailey. Mm-hmm. One, he was one of the DJ them who me used to admire and respect. In, in voice quality, voice range, the power and voice and all them stuff. There. So I think he's name is good, you know. Heal him up, you know. Uh, a few years ago I see him at a, a function at the arena. And me walk up here and say, Yeah lad, no, what, what, what I say? He said, Oh yeah, call to me like say, me and your friend. I don't understand that. He said that to me. So I said, all right, cool. Now, I don't know what happened between me and him. Because I hadn't seen him for a long, long while. But he said that. That means he, he must have something for the mind, you know? So, if he come tell me, what done, we can sort it out. Oh, he never asked? No, he never asked. Because he said that to me. I mean, but when I come into this music business, you know, I came in as a fan. Because... When we finally get to meet people like Supercat and Shabaranks, Toots, U Rai, Roy Shirley, Justin Hines and the Dominoes, Joseph Hill from Culture, Eric Donaldson. Anytime you see the man, you must go up and heal them up. I now wait for the man to come over and say hello to me. I'm a music fan. So all of them DJ there, where you see on the place, I rate them. He's a fan of their music. So whereas they might go a place and you see them duke up in a corner and wait for a man come say hello to them first, may you go say hello to them. They not come and say hello the to great them. great loving there. Yeah, but I see myself as that. We see them and they are great. They feel them own right. Because mm. in the dance hall business, them man they are giant, right. Yeah, me not a dance hall artist. Me love dance hall music. But the dance hall lyrics to an extent. Yes. To an extent where we can deliver the lyrics with conviction. So I got to sing about a girl a thief close off a line and all them stuff there. That men have that experience. That do that don't happen in my area. So me can't relate to that. <laughs> yeah. Wake up this morning and I eat no food and I drink no tea. And I hear it. No, yeah. no, that don't me cannot identify with that. So I do that. So them see me as an uptown artist. When them say uptown I mean so somebody who live up the so mm. who, who, who go a certain school or who talk a certain way. You know. But me can help the way me talk. Me is a Jamaican and me go to school so I not use certain words that sound illiterate, you know. Not to knock some people who talk illiteracy, right. you know. Because <laughs> they don't know no better. Willing to teach them, I have no problem with that. And that's why you are here, you can teach, teach them. them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you are barely the song to anybody else? Yeah, Fab Five. Yeah, I'm Fab Five. Yeah, man. 
Yeah. 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 You know, whilst you were active, you say, you know, you don't mind the do and song with the artist, sir? Yeah? yeah, a couple of them approached, but they're not, they're not interested. Oh, you know. approached? Yeah, approached. But, you know, yeah. Say, yeah, man, yeah, man, we do it. You know, it never happened, you know. All right. Is there anybody where you have in mind where you never approach, where you still don't mind doing song with? Mm, no, no, not really. Because, you see, those artists are usually the artists my age. Oh, okay. So, them kind of retired or something yeah. retired or not. Oh, like, so the people where they have in mind were younger? Yeah, they were younger, younger, younger than me, yeah. Mm. In fact, they're still younger than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. But me rate them, you know. I'm, yes. <laughs> and me like them style and all of that, so especially some of the DJ them, you know. You know? And sing with them too. You know? More successful song from a financial perspective, commercial perspective. Babylon boobs. Oh, uh, oh yes, you're not making money off of Gilbert. No, 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 I never said that. You're not making your amount to edit for me, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, none of my records are not making the amount they're supposed to make because yeah. them pirate them. Remember, you know, these records were hugely popular all over the Caribbean and the American, the Jamaican diaspora in the United States. So you can't police all of them there, even though you might give it to a reputable company to distribute. The piracy was rampant, mm. especially in the days of. Cassette. Man, could I just buy a cassette run machine out, and run off cassette? Yeah, man, and sell it regularly. That was happening to my material. As a matter of fact, I remember the sun splash that I did in Mobile. Dance all night when I started the show up and dance all night. Imagine that me, a star, dance all night, show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At the end of the show, when you're walking out of the venue, the air show up there. The whole of my show up <laughs> yeah. The aisle, Babylon, boops, panty size, everything. Yes. The sell, sell, sell. So, right? Babylon, boops has been a more successful song from a commercial perspective. Yeah. But in terms of probably name and fame as well, Gilbert. Yeah. You see, because Babylon, boops now reach uh, Europe and Africa and all them places. Mm. The Wild Gilbert now could reach. It's a more Caribbean, America style. Yeah, yeah. Where, the most, where the Jamaicans are. But, but Babylon, boops now. It could appeal to people who do have nothing about Jamaica, but know how police can up, tend to operate sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Is there a song in the catalogue where resonate with them more than the others? Like, you know, in your quiet time, and the one that keep on popping up in your head, like, it is a hum, it is a, a vibe, though? No, I mean, I really go over my song, them, you know. Yeah? Me, I tend to more vibe other, other people's, people's songs. songs. I yeah. call Eric Donaldson. I have a song named I'm Indebted to You. I'm Indebted to You. I say my love the song there. Beautiful and the way song. This, this style of him do it too. I got a letter on Monday, <laughs> but I never reply. I got another on Tuesday, <laughs> but I never reply. Because writing a little bit of letter couldn't say everything that I have got in my mind to say. <laughs> You say wicked man. I want to I want to write on. You yeah. can write letter every we day. I love that. Yeah. And people like Bob Marley and all them stuff. Me. The old time Bob Marley sang them. Now. Uh -huh. Like all... Uh, Stir it up, the early version of Stir it up. Stir it up, oh, okay. Yeah. And... Uh, as a matter of fact, let me tell you a story about the Bob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, see, me used to go to KC, as right. you can see, proudly. <laughs> We'd walk from KC down downtown we would take the the number the bus that was going up Maxfield Avenue. Mm. On the way down we were stopped by the Bob Marley. The, the, there was a, a record shop. Somewhere I don't remember exactly which road it was downtown. Yeah. But it was downtown. And uh, go inside the record shop and then welcome the the, the KC youth, you know. And we would spin some of the records them and come and love the sound. No, Peter touched. I never, see, I never saw Peter touch there, but there was Bonnie Wheeler Bonnie. and Bob Marley, you know. And we used to regularly go inside and spin the record, them. like stir it up and and uh, one love, one the, the, the old time version, right. yeah. But uh, Peter touch, not Peter touch. Bonnie, Bonnie Wheeler said to me, "Them record is not to play in a bar. Play our production inside, you know. Our production you must play." 
because they had now started their own production. That that just left Lee Perry, and oh, they were doing their own thing. Okay. So so Bob said, let the man play when he want to play, man. Because our song same way, mm, you know. True. And never forget that, you know. I mean, uh, Bonnie Willen never angry now, never vexed, right, but he right. said, no play them song, you know, man, you know. And Bob said, man, Make play. Make the man play, man. Yeah, yeah. Because me was a big Bob man, the fan. Still am, mm. you know. The old time songs, you know. How many children the loving they have? One, one daughter and a granddaughter. One daughter and a granddaughter. Yeah. Yeah. And them all right. Yeah, man. Uh, Last you are right, them all right. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't think we have to go buy a house my daughter. They yeah. can have the one that I have. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice, nice. The love in there married? Not as far as I know. <laughs> have ever been? No, I've never been married. Yeah. Uh, the reason is because I never really found anyone at the time that I wanted to settle down with, you know? Maybe they were bully for them out, they were good, nice, decent women. Most busy I seek uh, fame and fortune in the music business trying to make a living, you know? Yes. But they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of women been treating me good, you know? <laughs> nice. You know, seriously. As they should, as they should. As they should, as because they should. I, I love them and yeah, I treat man. them well, you know? I get good treatment from women. Yeah, man. A yeah. man did chat here, they come to help rectify it, eh? <laughs> the Isle, next big song that. Yeah, and me man. do that. Are you doing that? No, nah, man, are you doing that? Man. Yeah, man. <laughs> we are a children's keeper. Yeah. Yeah, That's man. Good song that again, as yeah, well man. in our catalog. Yeah, man. I, I did that song for UNICEF. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah? Yeah, man. They commissioned you to do the song? No, 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 no. I did the song and submitted it to them, and them love it, and them take it. I said, all the world is got to children, a children's charity. Man, thing, man. Yeah, man. Respect that. <laughs> uh, married life again is an next song. Where <laughs> do some things out of the road. Yeah, the catalog man. long so far, I love in there, man. Yeah. yeah. At them times, like I said, the songs were coming thick and fast, you know. And you said, since as a songwriter, it will, it will suit you if you are linked up with a record company who have a roster of artists. Where you can just write, write some artists. Yeah. Makes sense. I never had a roster of artists. Even though I tried to get some artists who could write songs, so I mm. wasn't interested. So when the ideas come to my head, I just kind of put them out there on record, you know, mm. do them myself. So if I say, I put out six songs in six months and all that, you know. But then again, they were current, so they were being played. You know? Yes. Social yeah. commentary, you know, government books. When people government look, books, right. Yeah. Uh, you see, that was an answer to, to see books there. See books, uh, from Supercat. Yeah. Mm. And government books went to number one as usual. Oh, yeah? Yes, of course. I never remember that. You forgot? <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, you're in terms come. of, you know, yeah. in the research that don't come, they just say that kind of thing. I don't know why. Yeah. It was a number one song. Yeah. You see, it was Best Customs Officer of number one song. Best Customs, yeah, I know that one as well. As a matter of fact, yeah, man, with that, well, on. When Shaka come with, you know what you like, like, yeah, you know, other artists come out with at the counter uh, I, I say, yeah, man, uh, run with them girl, uh, local girl, you must use an island something there, yeah? Both the artists come out and do counter So I decide, yes, say, so, Sam's officer. so I decide, I go and do uh, yeah, me know. a song to answer it, you know? So, no. so the song said, me are the best custom officer in Jamaica and me clear the trailer load of girl for Shabba. <laughs> we sang Zoom to number one. Ah. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, <laughs> in, in the early part of the song, I say, he's a Shabba, no, no worry yourself, are you my thief them style from? Yeah, declare. Yeah, man. Nah, he, I nothing. Yeah, man, because everybody knows that when me do another man song, you give the man them credit. credit. Mm. Yeah, man. Nice, nice. Catalog. Yeah, yeah. You have paid the dues. <laughs> you have yeah. done your work. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Whilst there were some challenges and struggles along the way, you stuck yeah. to it and believe yeah, in man. yourself. Of course. You see, as long as you know you have the talent, you know. And one way of knowing that you have the talent is by seeing who are going out the road, who are make money, and know say, you're rubbish just as good as feeling rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and now. <laughs> The yeah. thing is that what kind of set me apart in the early days too was that 
the, the words I was using in my songs and uh, uh, the, the style was, was something that the so-called uptown people could identify with. with. Mm. Not the, the, the subject matter was not like uh, them are grudge for this and them are grudge for that. And, bad and, and, yeah, my bad man. Yeah, it not everybody can identify with that in our us. True that man. Because some of us lead different lives. Different lives. I have good friends around us who who, who own a bad man who own a cut them my half away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when I write about those experiences you now, other people who can't speak, relate to yeah. you. Because a lot of things were happening in the dance hall music of Jamaica. It don't happen in the Barbados and Trinidad and the Caribbean. It's a different kind of culture. They love the music. But a lot of things that happen that we sing about in our dance hall, it don't, it don't happen in them places there. Eh? Mm. So when I sing my music, they want to send it to them places there. Eh? Them can identify with it. So, it. so even though you might see me upon some of them stage show Jamaica and some artists are going a certain way, and me just humble and take it, you know. But when you reach them regions there, eh? yeah, boss, one of them places. Sure. <laughs> it's a fly out uh, two times a week, but yeah. the shows on the islands, the man. Father, I love it there. <laughs> we do it a lot, we still are here. Me know. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate the one taking the time out, Mr. T. I appreciate the fine they got around to me after you got you all the time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Father, I love it there. Yes, sir. Mr. George. <laughs> For the people out there around the world who don't want to get in touch, you know, dub plates and other stuff, you know, probably the African oh. promoter got see you and say, oh, I'm booking around here in Japan. How they reach out, how, how they find you? Well, they can call me direct, you know, boss. That is what they love. Yeah, man. Yeah. 876-815-9702. Run it again. 876-815-9702. Nice. My direct number that. Nice, nice. They love that. Yeah. They love that. Sound man, they love that. Yeah. Or there's also an email. Llovindeer at gmail.com. Simple and straightforward. Simple and straightforward. Llovindeer at gmail.com. The man that is a loving deer, it's a joy. My, my pleasure. <laughs> it's really an honor. It yeah, is man, really, I really honor. enjoy this. And many people have been asking me to teach. As I'm, somebody inboxing on Instagram today, teach a fine loving deer. I laugh. Yeah. I say I'll be interviewing him soon, man. Soon it up. Yeah. So I saw the, been, the requests have been coming in and we just. I know that because I, I, I watch some of your programs then, and in the comment section, the man right. says, Right. Fine loving deer. Oh, when are going to interview Love India? Mm. And when we take the time off, I said, I know you are somebody who watches. And I yeah, appreciate man. the support. Believe me, man. Especially when I see artists who owe me, who I see for a long time. Yes. Respect, man. I appreciate the support. Big up, boss. I know you're all right. You're all right, sir. <laughs> yes, I'm all right. Can I see your finger like this? No, no it means at the time. Oh, oh I think you have one more question. So just cut on and neck. Think you have one question. Neck neck we just want to make sure we know. Answer your wrong. You ready, ready? Big up, boss. It's a joy, it's an honor. My pleasure, boss. Yeah. And appreciate the artifacts that you have collected. They helped a lot. I know that. I appreciate the man's time. And sorry for being late again. <laughs> yes, well, you take me to my com comfort zone now because comfort zone. I would have been home watching CNN or something at this time. CNN still a keep, but don't worry about it. Or playing, or playing dominance yeah, online. You know what you're Oh, you played online? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. I know you love dominoes, man. Yeah, man. Mm. But I guess this interview was so important to me that there's no way I could have. This. Really appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, man. That means that's a lot. That yeah, man. That's okay. Appreciate the man's contribution <laughs> to the music. Despite all of the fights, despite all of the struggles, despite all of the challenges. I'm sorry, I said the Glenrick thing never work out some more yeah, man. because them and the different class. Yeah, but I'm not different you, class. But I see Glenn now, you know. It hurt me. Yeah. You know, it hurt me more than you. Yeah, man. <laughs> it hurt me more than you. Because he's a good person, you know. Man, in so many different ways. Yeah, I tell you, man. So many but different ways. But you just get caught up in certain things, you know? Yeah, yeah. Anything you have to say to the fans before you, you leave them? Are you fancy, sir? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the love and the support over, the, over all these years, I tell you, man. Really appreciate it, you know? 
for welcoming me, welcoming me into your into your into your heart. <laughs> In, in your in homes. homes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate it, you know. Mm -hmm. Love it. And hopefully we can give you a couple more songs as Some time goes by. Yeah. Mm. Because things still are going on in Jamaica, you know, we still need to write something more. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Bigger boss. Do it with dynamite. And the brave man for whatever he is. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm talking about you. I'm going to continue to jump into that before that. Oh, my. Oh. Yes, man. Forty scanners, salary, none but this. Everything. The brave man for whatever he is. I'm in high school, matter that thing. I'm in high school, I have a name of your high school. I've seen what other matter they have. Okay. Yeah, man. <laughs> See, I read. Bigger boss. One uh, thing. Teach them. Hey, yo, hello. Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them. Right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them!